Welcome back to Razmafsar TV. I'm going to show you a beaver tail dagger, also marketed as Great Lakes Dagger by Hudson's Bay, um, um, which sells these knives in uh, Germany. It is based on an original uh, knife uh, from around 1800. It is a um, handmade piece uh, made in a workshop by a knife maker in Wales. And the dimensions and materials uh, used are the same as uh, old originals, as the company says. Um, the handle grips or the handle or the grip scales are made of uh, American walnut and they're decorated with inlaid brass pins. Total length is 24.5 centimeters. Blade length uh, is 13.5 centimeters, and blade thickness is 4 millimeters. Um, it sits very well in the hand, and uh, actually, be, I mean, this doesn't come with a scabbard, but most, I mean, the original ones have a scabbard in uh, Native American style. They were um, beaver tail daggers, um, were used especially pre-1850s uh, and it was a mountain man knife style that took its name from the shape of the blade I mean mostly they are double edged this one is um, single edged and the blade is typically wide and thin diamond shaped cross section as I said it reminds um, of a shape of a beaver's tail and the handle of um, beaver mm, tail daggers are two wooden or two buffalo horn scales. In this case, what you see in front of wood, and they're riveted in place. And these rivets are brass or copper rivets. In this case, as you see, they're um, brass rivets or pins. They're also known as Columbia River Dagger, American Dog, Northern Plains Dag, and Blackfoot Dagger. They were an important trade uh, item. You can see here um, I'm using it in um, reverse grip, and you can see it uh, sits very well in my hand when I do a reverse grip. And also very powerful strike by going back and escaping uh, with my legs. And now I'm going to in a forward grip. You see that in a forward grip is also you can do it. Mostly it was used as far as I know in reverse grip. But then you can change it like in any knife uh, fighting style. You can easily change it. You know it's in quite a heavy dagger. But you see that it sits so well. And uh, I have been doing lots of martial arts as you have. You know channel following my solo trainings so the speed of my hands are, have been increasing the power and speed but this dagger is really good and I really like it the way it sits in the hand um, so you can uh, yeah, I need to say you can also make very powerful thrusts with this because it's a solid blade Those of you who might say, might wonder how this uh, dagger is uh, cut, right? I'm going to show you how it cuts meat. So actually it can be used as a hunter's knife or a butcher's knife, back then um, as a mountain uh, uh, knife and was also used that way of course, not only for fighting but mostly for hunting and also as a butcher's knife as well. Of course, as fighting as well. So, as I mentioned it before, they were also known as Columbia River Dagger, American Dog, Northern Plains Dog, or Dag, Blackfoot Dagger. They were a common, uh, uh, important trade item offered by various uh, fur trading firms, including the American Fur Company, Northwest Company, Pierre uh, Chouteau Jr. and Company, and the Upper Misery Company. 
They were designed to compete with the Hudson's Bay Company and Duck and were introduced in 1790s. And they continued in production, the original ones, I mean, with handles until about 1850. And also continued to be supplied without handles until the end of the 19th century. So you can see here again how it uh, cuts. See how easily it goes through the meat and cuts it. As far as originals are concerned, the most common sizes of beaver tail daggers had 7 inches and also 9 inch blades with fewer numbers made in 8 inch and 10 inch length. Those sold without handles were often hafted with bear jaws, mountain sheep horn, wood, horn and copper by their Native American owners. And these daggers and blades were mostly produced by cutlery companies and firms in Sheffield, England, including those companies as Sorby, Dukes, Colson, Dukes, Colson, Stokes and Company. And the original ones, many were marked with Cross L, an early 19th century HBC house brand. So you can see how well it cuts the meat.
channel please subscribe to our channel and ask any questions you might have thank you